Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Player Mouse. It's been a year since we first tested out these custom-made shotgun darts. I nearly forgot that I had some darts left over, and this is actually the fifth in a series of tests with these darts. Okay, whenever you're ready. Oh, yes. I was sent nearly 30 of these darts, and this one was our favorite. It actually stuck into this quarter-inch steel plate. And you may have noticed that even though the fins were straight, it was still rotating in flight. The hardened steel tip survived piercing that plate without bending, breaking, chipping, or anything. Now recently we posted a video where we shot throwing darts. A lot of people wanted to see that. Now many people asked why we didn't use a metal dart or a proper dart as they called it. And it all has to do with what will work in a shell and what won't. A shotgun produces a tremendous amount of force. Those flights would have been stripped off or destroyed, and there would be very poor support against that plastic shot cup, so it would just fail on so many levels. Now, a proper dart is one designed and built to be shot out of a shotgun. It has to be strong enough to survive being shot, for one thing. It has to have good support against the shot cup, and it has to sit straight in the barrel so it'll fly straight using e either sleeves or a sabo. The amount of work put into these darts is impressive. It's a lot of thinking and planning and design. And these are the darts that we will be shooting today. There's a total of six of them. Each dart is made of several different components and assembled. Some have hardened tips, some have tungsten tips. So let's see which of these will work. First we'll try dart number one. So dart one was a failure and also a failure on my camera work. Dart two consists of a machined aluminum body and I believe an unsharpened tungsten penetrator. Oh, wow. Oh. Now despite having that blunt unsharpened tip, it managed to pierce the plate. Out of all the darts we've tested, this one was probably the most effective we've ever shot. Even uh, damaged the brick behind it. Now you have to understand the scope of this. There really is no commercial shotgun ammunition that does this at all. A guy working in his shed on the island of Malta designs a supersonic shotgun penetrator. He normally makes unusual rounds for air cannons and he wanted to see if he could translate that into a shotgun dart. He can't own a shotgun on the island of Malta so he sent them to me halfway around the world for me to test out. This dart performed absolutely flawlessly. Now dart 3 was very similar in design to dart 1 and I think that's just a bad design. We didn't have very good results, so I'm just going to show you the high-speed footage of that. We didn't see the clean separation of the, the two halves of the Sabo, and the dart started out flying at an angle, then it looked like it was beginning to reorient itself and straighten itself out. The only real failure with this was the fact that it just didn't hit the mark. It wasn't accurate. But as you've seen in my other videos, when we shoot objects that appear like they would fly straight, they rarely do. They usually fly sideways and tumble around. Dart 4 is made out of a bolt. It has plastic fins and I believe a tungsten carbide penetrator in the nose. And it's tungsten, as you know, is very dense, very heavy, which makes the round more nose heavy than if it didn't have that. Yeah, four. Hit it, Tony. Oh, solid. Now this round, it flew accurately, but because it wasn't flying straight, it was wobbling around it. It hit at an angle and didn't pierce the plate, didn't have enough energy to push its way through the plate. A lot of people ask us if we're 
concerned about ricochets. We always set the plate at a slight angle. You'll notice in all these shots, the rounds that are hitting the plate are deflected off to the side. The round did leave a nice dent in the plate though. Dart 5 is a really beautiful looking dart. It has a hardened steel uh, shaft and tip and an aluminum body and fin assembly. Now you got to appreciate all the work machining and shipping it and all that stuff for that millisecond these things are being shot. It was low I think right? Now for whatever reason, and it may have been our own fault, the two halves of the Sabo didn't separate and, and release the dart and the entire assembly flew and nosedived right into the ground. And I really like that dart too. The good news is dart 6 is almost identical to dart 5. So we have a second chance here to redeem ourselves and make this right. Nice. Man, that that breaking exploded. Nice. Man, that that breaking exploded and gone. Now it's hard to believe that we could do any better than Dart 2, which pierced the plate. But this one really worked well. The separation of the Sabos was perfect. The Dart flew straight as an arrow. And just look at the damage it did to the brick behind it. Just busted it up. Now if you look closely, it looks like the dart just bounced off the plate. But since the brick behind it was all busted up, something went through it. Now looking at the plate afterwards, you can see where the, the a piece of the hardened steel shaft is still stuck in it. But if we turn it over, you can see that it actually pierced it. And another part of the tip of the round probably broke off from that and continued and, and destroyed the brick that was behind it. And again, this is very unusual, especially for a shotgun to be able to pierce a piece of steel like that. This is more like a rifle round than a shotgun round. Thanks, Tony, for helping out. Thanks, Darren, for filming. And I hope you enjoyed watching this. Thank you, and bye-bye. I'd like to add that the shells that we used were probably older than most of our viewers. These things were probably first generation plastic shotgun shells and featured a nice hard fiber wad on them which I think gave it better support.